Awesome. Welcome. Dr. Diane Powell, kick us off in our conversation, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so my background is that as a neuroscientist and a neuropsychiatrist, and my area of research has been savant syndrome, which is this capacity that is found more commonly in autism than any other condition. And it's a capacity to know things that we really don't understand how, how they have any way of knowing them. And so a, a classic example is um, children who can do calendar calculation and tell you what day of the week any date would fall on for any year, for even um, tens of thousands of years, and yet they can't do simple uh, arithmetic. And they tell you that the answers just appear to them. Uh, there are cases of uh, children being mathematical spots in which they can solve um, complex mathematical equations, and yet they've really never been exposed to math. And so these things have been so well documented that as a, um, as a theoretician, um, I, I became I, really intrigued by them, and I felt that they could be holding the keys to our understanding uh, consciousness and, and, and understanding things about the brain, because these are not explained by conventional neuroscience. And so I came up with a theory about which parts of the brain would be active in, um, in these phenomena and, and the kinds of things that we would potentially find. And lo and behold, um, that the, the autistic brain and what we know about it um, fits the bill. And um, if you look at the deficits that a lot of children have is they are what we consider left hemisphere deficits. And if you look at the savant skills, many of those are uh, similar to the gestalt thinking, something that we think of as a right hemisphere um, activity. And um, ESP is also considered to be a right hemisphere activity predominantly, although there are exceptions to this, but there are exceptions to the wiring of the brain. You have some people who are left-handed, for example, and we know that their brain is lateralized differently. Women are lateralized differently than men. So we cannot lump all of these people together. And we particularly can't lump autistic children together because we, we know that their brains are very different. And we don't have very much um, uh, quantitative QEEG data on the savant brain um, because the prodigious savants are really very few in number. And so some of the children that I have been studying have been children that have, for example, acquired as many as eight languages at the age of two. And so I've been wanting to study their brains. And in the context of uh, discussing th these children with their parents, I discovered that many of them have parents who report that uh, they have this, um, uh, the children have this ability to, uh, quote, read their mind, unquote. And um, I have conducted controlled studies um, extensively on three of these children. And I have seen sufficient evidence that I believe that this is a true phenomenon, that, that there is something that is, uh, that, that is happening here in which these, these children are accessing non-local information from a, uh, another individual's consciousness, whereas we um, typically think of savant skills as accessing non-local consciousness for some from something like, say, you know, the you know collective consciousness, or you know, or body of knowledge, wherever that exists, and so to me, it, it really doesn't make sense to think of these um, things. Uh, some things is impossible while while accepting the others. To me, that 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 to me is really um, demonstrating an anti-science bias, and so. In looking at the literature that exists on EEG recordings uh, from not only from savants, but from people that have demonstrated um, high abilities in, say, for example, remote viewing, people like Ingo Swan, who, who has been extensively studied, we see that there are certain things that you can, uh, information you can derive. For example, Ingo Swan had a characteristic seven hertz spike that was coming out of this occipital lobe. And because we know the occipital lobe is involved in viewing, it, that's interesting. And that is not the kind of EEG that you see with just regular viewing. Um, so similarly, we have data that is, um, that's been done on telepathy looking at EEGs. And some of it shows that there's a right hemisphere um, dominance, and, um, but there have been exceptions to that. And 
some interesting work that was done um, separating out male from female um, uh, people showed that that actually the, the women actually engage in this process differently. Mm -hmm. And so at this time, I actually have seven savants um, who, who claim to have this non-local uh, connection with a parent. And my goal is to gather as much data as possible doing simultaneous QEG recordings of, of both members of the pair to see um, you know, what is going on in the brain. And, and if we can establish that there is a common pattern, then that is, that is one of the, um, that is one of the pieces of evidence that really helps to push this paradigm along. Uh, but additionally, so many of these children and their parents, when I, when I conversed with them and, and wanted to know what, what is going on with them, they describe this uh, tenuous relationship between their mind and their body. And, and certainly when you examine them clinically, you can see that many of them really have difficulty with the motor aspects of communication, that, that predominantly it, it's really the, the muscles that are needed either for speech or for typing that have been impacted. And so one of the things that has happened is, is as dutiful parents have put the time into trying to help their child develop the skills such that they can communicate. Once these children start communicating, that's when they discover that the, that the child is actually, uh, uh, quote, reading their mind or accessing non-local uh, information. And, and uh, inevitably, many of these parents first approached me thinking that their child is a, um, saying that they thought their child was a savant with some other uh, savant skills such as mathematics. And, and then it's when they discover that, uh, no, it, it's something else entirely. Fascinating. So over. <laughs> Thank you. And I want to toss the, toss the ball to, to Manisha uh, so that she can give her, um, her fascinating case study. Yeah, so Dr. Paul, like, uh, so I'm Manisha Lad, and I am Akhil's mom. This is my first introduction. Akhil is our only 20 year old uh, son who has autism. I used to say the statement he is recovering from autism. I no longer say that. Um, but yes, he had savant skill and I had no idea what the savant skill are. And as Dr. Paul rightly said about reading the mind. So to 11 years of age when Akhil was completely nonverbal, had no more of communication his school introduced this typing supported typing method and it was extremely controversial and it was people where either we just had two choice whether should believe or not believe they also threw a concept of um, mind and body disconnect and that time we had done Akhil's QEG and I was reading how the brain hemispheres work together and how his right side of his, of his hemisphere was too active and what kind of connections. So we, I had some idea about, about the, the, the brain hemispheres. And as Akhil started typing, yes, there were a number of constant phenomena of Akhil going through my mind. Like if I'm reading something and if I'm, I'm not reading it loud, but Akhil would, would already know about it, what am I reading? Example, if I'm going to set a, read a question paper, I see a question paper and I see, okay, there are five questions. While I go through it, he's already knew all those questions. <laughs> so it was very tricky. And when the school was constantly talking about mind and body and Akhil started expressing through iPad, uh, he made a very phenomenal statement saying, I cannot see my body in my mind. So the, it was such a difficult thing with no technology where EEG was okay. He, he didn't had any severe abnormal EEGs. He doesn't have, he didn't have any seizures, you know, or we did had QEGs, but we had no mode of communication or no way how how to explain all this to somebody when a, especially a mothers who are coming who are or don't come from the medical field or or even if you come from medical field i don't know how how many accepting this thing these methods are and as we started communicating with him more and started asking him questions like they would teach him in school what is number five and he and uh, and or to give five objects like he give five objects that was one of the goal 
because school is all behavioral they want to see the functional skills we say something uh, we ask an individual to do an individual should perform and that was a biggest difficult thing for Akhil as Dr. Paul said about the motor issues so I asked Akhil Akhil what is phi and he typed and said phi means to give five things so I put 10 almonds in front of him and told him okay now give me five almonds and he would like one two three four five and he wouldn't stop so I would bring my iPad again and ask him why didn't you stop he said my brain doesn't give me instructions when to stop so this was so so now this was all coming I wouldn't make up if he's completely reading my mind I wouldn't make up this for my child as a mother so I was very very firm that I'm going to believe in my believe in this because I believe I know how I think or if you teach him something I'm teaching him very simple in integers and he's laughing and I said like okay why are you giggling and he would type and say oh this is used in many geometrical uh, formulas where he was never even exposed to all these things so I had no idea where is this coming from or he would come and make a statement that oh the teachers in my school are not good enough I said then who are your teachers and he would say my teachers are stars <laughs> so it was it was purely he was so much connected to the uh, the world and we had no clue how to get him but as we explored many treatments and um, he would sometimes tell me that yes this is not your mind answer this is my mind answer because many times we would have but now um, after working on his body and understanding him we were able to bring in more treatment modalities for him and once we started working on his body touching his fingers every finger he would say oh I have hand and I have fingers and they move and now there was also timing difference when he used to play piano he used to play like this with one then we, I had to physically open his hands and fingers or you know from manually and then when he would even use all these fingers there was a timing difference even in the fingers and now he's come to the point that he is able to put both the hands on the piano and and I don't have to open it they just open you know so we had to work on his entire body now how to explain this because unfortunately Akhil gives lot of output only to me because of that mind to mind relationship and the unconditional love and connection that's how he operates and it is so hard to explain explain to people and that's why when we approached Dr. Diane Powell and uh, when we had a first experiment in our house with Dr. Paul and Dr. Deepak and I approached Dr. Diane again we need to bring in technology and how now with the technology how we, we are able to see some findings so that really helps to and uh, it is one way to see how can how can we explain people because people want to see everybody wants to see tangible I want to see those blood markers in my blood or in the urine but how can you show this what is what are the different ways and that's where I again approach Dr. Dawn Powell and thank you to her how she brings in such technologies and mm -hmm. and how we landed up to to you Tiffany it, it was like something universe has its own plan and and I'm glad we're able to talk about this today. A absolutely. Thank you for explaining even more detail that I didn't have before, Manisha. It's it's really an, a gift. Um, I would like Paul to explain his experience. What I do want to say very quickly to acknowledge you, what I have seen as a clinician and, and researcher myself, not as sophisticated as what uh, Dr. Powell has been doing, but just in my clinical work with working with families is that the unconditional love is the key yes. between that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. that autism, I believe, is so prevalent these days is to help us increase our communication mm -hmm. and also to really operate from the heart from unconditional love. That's what they're here to teach us, I believe. So thank you for representing that and honoring that and seeing that you can have a successful relationship with your autistic child because of that truth. Yes, yeah. he, they have come here to transform us. And there is a study done by Virginia University by one of the uh, professors, researchers, Dr. Vikram Jaiswal. And in his study, he 
he uh, interviewed did a survey with 5 10 or 15 families especially all those individuals who type and all these mothers said that once we accepted our children the way our relationship with them was totally different and they opened up to them mm-hmm. because the acceptance is the key and it has to be with the integrity you cannot fake a kill you cannot fake anything to a kill no <laughs> no you cannot he no. just get he just gets it <laughs> Yeah. Paul, can you speak yeah, to your experience? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Because... Uh, thank you Manisha for explaining what you did and just all the loving work you've done with the kill over the years that I've thank been you. familiar with the last few years. And Dr. Pal, I appreciated your introduction and all of the uh really hard work and pioneering work you've mm-hmm. been doing studying these children and to understand the capacity of the human being beyond what we ordinarily understand and accept. So as you know, I met you both a few years ago and it was in a context of doing some research studies at your house, Manisha. Uh I personally experienced that long local communication with Akil. It was fascinating and beautiful. And uh and then we we did our experiments and I was also very interested in those findings demonstrating uh repeatedly this communication that you have the two of you together. and uh that was really uh beautiful and to watch and be part of and then as you know uh you were here at our home uh some yes, weeks yes. back yes, and we yes. did some more experiments together and I know Tiffany's going to share uh the outcomes of some of those were uh those studies with the BioWorld device and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing you uh get into that Tiff yeah but will you say a little bit more about your connection cuz it it was Manisha reached out to Okay. Okay. Well, no, it was uh, di- how, how did Deepak get involved and Diane and Manisha well, were already connected, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, I can answer that. Please, <laughs> um, please. So, so what happened was is that I already I already had spoken with Deepak about um Savant because of my work with Ramses and um and introduced him to Ramses who's another child who has this non-local uh, communication he's also a child the child who i previously mentioned who had acquired eight different languages at the age of 2 and he was able to read a college physics uh actually it was a college astronomy book at the age of 5 and um so he's he's one of the prodigious resp- uh, savants and um because of this there's a there's a famous um indian um mathematician i think his name is um is it ramadan um i think that's how you pronounce it and um and so i knew that the chopra center would be interested in um ramses as a potential person like ramadan and so so ramanan, i ramanan uh, ramanan ju yeah ramanan ju yes uh uh-huh. yeah. and and so So I I contacted him and and arranged to meet with him and um and and so I had this ongoing relationship and then when Manisha told me that she had this vision and I don't think she even knew that I knew Deepak or maybe she saw the um the video that I yes. had done she saw the video that I had done with Deepak in his office where he was basically uh, inviting his followers to help fund my research um and um and was having me explain what what my research was about and and Manisha saw that she knew that I had this relationship with him and she thought that it would be really um uh help push things forward for him to to see Akil and and his abilities and asked me if I would um invite him to witness one of my experiments and um at the time he um he, he had relocated to New York and um so it um was just a train ride or you know a car ride in you know and he was able to witness it along with with Paul yeah and I'll add that uh my my experience with Akil with a non-local communication uh I was at my home in San Diego and we were preparing using computer generated uh integers and letters random numbers and letters for uh, the experiments And so while I was putting these together and we were printing them out on the card to put them in the envelope. Of course I was aware of what we were planning to do. But while I was doing it, I had such a clear communication. I suddenly felt a keel in my own mind. I had never met him, but the nature of non-local communication is there's so much information embedded within it. And I knew immediately who he was and that I would be meeting him in person soon. 
but it was as if he just came in, he was checking out what we were doing, getting ready for the experiment. And then you know, he withdrew uh, his communication. Of course, then I met him in person about a week later to do the experiments. I remember that I and Dr. Don, we were in the, um, in the, in a, in a, you know, somewhere in a grocery store and Dr. Paul, you called her before you left, you called her and you shared your experience with her. Mm. Yeah. So I f remember that. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we, we've been speaking a little bit about some kind of capturing in the data uh, from a QEEG um, and EEG, and it's just not quite capturing exactly what's happening. And then we come together, it was not necessarily on the outset, but there's been conversations amongst the four of us going on for a couple of years now. As you know, I work with this device called the BioWell, and the BioWell is a subtle energy measuring device. We're measuring the things that are in the subtle range, maybe even before the QEEG is going to pick up anything as such. And it's really just a, a totally different band of technology. So the BioWell uses the fingertip meridians to make a measurement and we are seeing the biophotonic discharge, a gas discharge off of the ends of the fingertips. And getting um, an autistic child to sometimes put their fingers in a device is a bit challenging. The, I've worked with several physicians over the years and it's not the easiest um, capture to get. So when I show you this data, there's going to be some noise in the background um, because there's, but you have to just sort of, you learn to read through it because what we're gonna be seeing are patterns. And primarily the focus that we'll see today is the looking at mostly the chakras. There are some things that we absolutely see with digestive patterns and some of the physiology that we see uh, in repetition with children with autism. But the, this is really the emphasis of what we did when we were together doing um, the measurements with you, with your family and Akil being present here in our house was the interaction of you two, the interaction of Paul and the interaction with your husband and the non-local communication effects that we could see on the chakras. And is it telling the, a similar story or is it telling a, a different type of, of story? What I have typically seen with autistic children is that oftentimes they're not physically in their body. It's like there's, there's a body there, but they're not oriented to their physicality. And you will see that in the bio well by the chakras actually being a little bit outside of what we consider the optimal range or norm range. So let me go into that and share. So one of the things that, so this is Akil's data. This is our, uh, actually, let me begin. This is the first baseline um, <clears throat> that we did. It was about, it took some time to get both hands in there and that's okay. But it, um, the information that we get around the field is it's all there. There's patterns. It's a bit choppy. This is what we're looking at is not the auric field. What we're looking at is the symbolism of, or what I should say is the map. What we're seeing is not the auric field. We are seeing a map of the organ systems based on the homunculus of the hands and uh, specifically the fingertips. So we're not paying attention for this emphasis of what we're looking at so much on the physical but we are on the psycho-spiritual energetic. And the baseline where, where we would expect to, well, I shouldn't say expect, what we aim for are elements of these chakras to be within the this band of space. It's a very light green. And so from here, you can see that there's movement of outside of current psychological time. I like to describe this area between these, these green spaces as current psychological time. 
So if we look at all of these rep representation of the various chakras, there it's there's not a lot that's physically present. And and also Akia was in a new space. So that's the first one. Then about 15 minutes after regular communication. And Manisha, would you please describe what regular communication is? It, in, it's the, not the telepathic, but the regular communication. A regular communication means like I just ask him questions and then he just types his answers or he verbally uh, tells me. Like he says something, I as if you know Akhil is not able to listen to his own voice it's mm. like it's right he doesn't have any hearing problems but he says something and I repeat and he listens to my audio and he continues and I just repeat so if he wants to say I want to go in the car it doesn't come out so he says I want to then say I want to and then he f adds the further Many a times when it comes to individuals autism, it is the other way around and, in, and a, a caregiver is telling to say this, I want to go in the car, but we don't do that. It's in, with the kill, it's other way around. So that is the mode of communication, I would say normal without using an iPad or without touching him or, or yeah, so that is it. Okay, beautiful. So what we see here as a result of normal communication is the throat chakra. Now in the bio well, we're also looking at the size in addition to the alignment. The alignment is, is sort of the, the typical, what we say, the, the sort of traffic light model, but that's, we expect chakras to be moving around in a, a healthy person. And, and so we wanna be able to look at also what is the amount of energy present. So, we, we see that the it's 6.3 joules. And then also, you know, the heart chakra is also large, 5.7 joules. We're measuring literally in joules as well. And so the aggregate total that you see up here is 5.5 joules. And then this has to do with the representation, also the chakra alignment, the percentage of how much is within the, the span of what we consider norm for age and gender. And also, like I said, we expect this to be moving around. So normal communication, when we see it on this side of the screen, or I should say uh, the throat chakra on this side of the screen has to do with relationship to the outside of himself. It's reaching out to others. What you see here, this is Russian software. So they spell things a little bit differently, but extrovert, social life towards others work. So it's literally the right side of the body. It's like a, an outreach of, of energy. Meanwhile, his heart is going a little bit more of a, to an internal space. So when you see the chakras showing up on the opposite side, it's more related to a, an inward conversation, an inward connection. So it, it's just an interesting thing to, to consider. And then the third eye chakra has, has a lot to do with how he might even be visualizing. And uh, there, I've heard you comment about how the world is represented to Akil in how he sees or how he hears. And that's a little bit different. So I'm gonna move to the next one. And this is a few minute, taken a few minutes after telepathic communication between you and Akio Manisha. And look, look at these two now in total alignment. And it's, and of course the throat, even though he's not using his, the verbal language, the throat is still the energy of communication. Mm. And that, that's what we're also seeing here. And then his, his, personal will, the, the solar plexus chakra, is taking a back seat. It's, it's more about an outreach with his heart, connection to you, seeing, and, and also the sacral chakra. This is really fascinating. The sacral chakra is representing mother as well. So there's an outreach to you as, as mom. Now, yes, it, it's on the technically the right side of the body, but the communication is is going to you. Mm. So 
would you, um, and I can bring up yours as well, but um, Dr. Di, yeah, please tell us where you would like to go next. Oh, well, you know, one of the things I think is fascinating about this data is, um, as you've pointed out, um, I mean, the, the third eye chakra, um, the indigo blue one, and then the light blue uh, one, the throat chakra, I mean, those are exactly what you would have expected and exactly for them to be on the extroverted side. And what's interesting is that many of these children do better when the um, the parent is on their right side. And then and, and sometimes they, they'll actually protest against doing it the other way. And that makes sense if, you, if, you, if you're thinking of, uh, you know, of, of what this data is telling us. And also I would like to add when SOMA, when we do the RPM method or when you do any teaching method, SOMA always tells you sit on the right side of the body and teach them. The teaching has to happen through the right side. So we always have to sit on the right side. And this also shows like why one day Akhil had a meltdown in a bus and it was a major meltdown and he came home and every, we all were upset and I asked him, Akhil, what happened? And he just said one day, he made a statement, you have to teach the world how to, how to read my mind. Because yes, I, he says, I have to read people's mind. Mm -hmm. That is his operating system. Now imagine a challenge to his world when his operating system is like that. This is how he operates. And now on the other side, we are fighting with the whole world and telling and again, coming in from a mother's perspective, like, who are you? You are just a mom, you know, like, what is the hypothesis? Mm -hmm. Where is the research? So this is a beginning. Mm -hmm. This is a beginning. Mm -hmm. It is a beginning. It's really beautiful. Yeah. But one of the things I'm excited about is um, later next month, I'm going to be introducing um, Ramses and this girl named Mia. And Mia is very similar to Akil. And so we'll, we'll see whether or not they go into a non-local communication with one another. Hmm. Oh, wow. wow. Well, we need to take measurements of that of them. Well, I'm going to bring the bio well with me. And, okay, um, and then Jeff Tarrant uh, is going to be doing the QEEG. Wow. Perfect. That's be Perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Keep us abreast of that. Um, Manisha, I think it would be good because you could, you could speak to, if you're, open to it, I could show your bio well for the same essentially times sure. that we were looking at it. Sure. Uh, okay, yeah, great. Sure. Okay, so this is your first baseline. Okay. And let us also say that you had to drive a couple of hours to come be at our house in the mountains of North Carolina. Um, so this is the the reading on this, the interpretation is that you were a little, even though it's all within the norm range, it, it's just a little bit more in the reserve. It, it's like, you know, that there's a job that you're about to yeah. do and, and, and still keeping your presence, your, I am uh, present for yourself, your own power in place is also important. And also rep recognizing that you're there to do a job. You, you were on your way to, to doing this. So this is a second baseline, mm -hmm. a little bit more, a little movement, but kind of mo more in the same direction. Mm -hmm. We always like to take two baselines. We didn't on a keel because it's just a challenge just to getting, get, getting any uh, <laughs> interactions there. So this is normal communication between mm -hmm. you and a keel. And so, you know, his was the outreach mm -hmm. and what I've heard you describe, and I'd like for you to put it in your own words, is that you have to back out of the way. You have to get out of the way in order for him to communicate, but you, you speak to that in your own words, please. So, uh, as I told you, like what happens and, you know, uh, this is so hard to, I was looking for answers. What, what happens like I'm sitting here and whatever thoughts is, are there in my mind, you know, it's automatically, it's in Akhil's mind. Or many a times our communication becomes very smooth if my mind and his mind are in a sync. Mm -hmm. And that I also had heard from her, his teacher. She says when my mind information and the child's mind information is same, then the then the then the when they start communicating it's smooth there are no it just 
so this phenomena is so hard to understand that how the the thought sometimes one of the my friend's daughter expressed that she asked that how come your information comes into my mind and she said that i pour in the information in your mind mm, beautiful so you know and, results, yeah uh, sorry it, it was this when you look at the crown chakra here that is right spot on online it's your own alignment in order to be able to receive that is one way i would interpret this and you know then also look at the size once again you're seeing 6.6 .6 here Achilles was 6.3 and 6.7 so you were almost a match energy for energy in in measuring it from from that direction and then here's the one right after telepathy and your your throat chakra got to 7.1 and it, I, it's just fascinating and you've described it actually also how this used to drain you energetically yes. and and you know maybe if we were looking at at other data at different time sets that you we may have seen that but we didn't have the measurements at that time but this was your self-report that you didn't have you were coming away from the sessions with akil being worn out and just energetically zapped and yes. you haven't been that way and my interpretation of this is that you were not energetically zapped here you actually had your energy intact is that true from your perspective having yes uh, yes okay. so what happens like you know i have to it's, it's i f i feel like i'm going to use the word submission i submit myself to him mm -hmm. okay yeah and that's what we see here yeah. when you you kind of just take a back seat yes I have to take a back seat because if there are thoughts in my mind and I can influence his, I can influence, he can get influenced with the thoughts. So I have to, I don't know how it happens, but I think because of the integrity of so much of integrity and unconditional love for Akil, which mm -hmm. especially are into actions because I'm very hungry, a mother, to, to find something for, for Akil. And I'm also very uh, visionary, visual. I don't, at back then also, now also, in the future also, I don't require any doctor or any therapist or anybody to tell me that, oh yeah, Akil is going to get better, Akil is going to do, do this, Akil. Because at, when he was not even communicating, and he was extremely hyper, I made a statement to somebody that, look, he is going to do algebra. And that time they used to laugh at me. <laughs> but now when they saw everything, all this coming out, the same person came and told me that I will never dare now ever to doubt any mother with a special need. Mm. So, you know, this is a transformation which Akhil has brought in in me. And it is my transformation journey. So, so yes, I have to submit myself. I have to give myself. It's like you become a devotee to a to a God and you just love, you know, and you devote. So now I say I'm, a, now I see like back then, like why I'm so much doing, why can't I give up? Why can't I give up anything which, you know, I just don't give up. If it's not working this way, let's find the other way because that's my mom has taught me that never give up, why it's not happening, check it out and don't give, and don't give up. So now I say like, uh, okay, I've devoted my life to Akhil it's it's a devotion and same to my work and that's why i'm always happy I, I, I always look this is my happy state like akhil just doing a derivative is like a very happy state for me he's beyond that i'm i'm like such a child inside me that okay like this is so small what i'm trying to teach him like like when he talks about energies when he made a state he typed something about um, sound we were reading something about consciousness and quantum. We were we just started reading a very small para, and there is nowhere it has mentioned the word sound. And he typed that sound is a form of matter for consciousness. Mm. So he's oh. beyond, and I yes. think it's I have to catch up a lot. And I don't know whether it's going to be this life I'll be able to catch up because he's beyond my capacity. 
what i mm. can plan for akhil is very little so in fact i just go to him to learn okay what what is i need so i just go to him like what is it i need and he is constantly uh, and i'm very glad you know when when dr paul came to our house you know he introduced me to you and that time i had just uh, started listening to sadguru and because of akhil i started listening to sadguru i said like this guy is just talking like my akhil so he must have should have lot of answers and uh, in one of the videos um, one of the top most heart specialists from india asked doc sadguru a question about um, thoughts how can one this telepathic thoughts can go from one person and he said that 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 phenomenon doesn't happen like and you cannot say that i'm sitting here and i'm going to put a thought into your into somebody else's mind that it doesn't happen like that and he said i can only tell that when a thought comes into a person's mind automatically at that time it's going into the other person's mind mm-hmm. so automatically it happens automatically at the same time it's not that you can plan something now i'm going to put something in dr dian's mind or tiffany's mind no it's automatically so it's a vibrational energy this is beyond our capacity to understand yeah well well th- well thank you thank you manisha and um and and thank you paul and tiffany you, i yes. mean i you know i really um really appreciate having this opportunity to yes. collaborate with all of you um and and i'm and really looking forward to uh, where this is going to go same here same here thank you so much uh, for because this is an opportunity to for everybody to know that yes there is something like this and it is okay it is okay to accept this form of communication and it can show wonders so thank you yes it sure can if i can add that for me much of this just uh, reinforces the power of love and unconditional love and the magic that can happen when one human being fully and completely loves another then the gifts that are inherent in all of us can begin to unfold and we're just talking about an example here but but who knows what else all of us are contained within us to share with each other and and this world we live in it's it's the falling in is the falling in love is that's why i use the word devotion i think that love i mean if you think about it every emotion has a frequency associated with it yeah and i really think that love is the carrier wave uh-huh. and and that's the way to think of it that's beautiful yeah. that is absolutely thank beautiful so. thank you so, so, so thank you for the your manisha also just want to specifically call out the openness of your mind and the way that you are receiving and also broadcasting that love mm. and i am just hopeful that that is the thing that is picked up from yes. this conversation yes. yes and if any yes. scientists are so in called to this yes. that we're measuring yes. we we want to put more science behind it but yes. we also need science to catch up and also stay open minded so <laughs> yes and here we go i want to add if if i don't do what i do and if i don't then i'm going i'm going to lie to myself then i'm lying to my akil mm-hmm. and i'm lying to myself so this has to come out and he's a trailblazer and he's opening doors for many so thank you dr paul for continue we need doctors like you and tiffany and paul dr paul thank you so much because now we all are talking the same language and telling it is possible Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.